Hi, I'm Miss No Tall. I am Victoria and I'm back with another video to speak this time around about the height of people. How people are just going shorter and shorter due to lack of protein. Yeah, let's get into it, shall we? So, if you didn't watch the last video, I was, I came back from work, from tutoring some students, and I was just like, the whole day, I was hungry, and I made myself some scones, and I just started ranting. I turned on the camera and started ranting, because I'm like, dude, this is bad, and I spoke about the education system. If you didn't want to watch that video, I suggest you, you do, uh, it will be on the channel. Uh, these are the scones that were missing, uh, a little bit of cooking. Now they're a little too cooked, but you know what, who cares, I'm eating them. To a good hunger there is no hard bread. And speaking of hard bread, yes, today we're talking about a very sad topic once again, which is food deprivation and how the population have been so food deprived in the past 20 years that uh, children are just shorter, adults are shorter because the children of 20, 30 years ago are now adults and so many of them are just shorter than I am and it's not a genetic thing it's just that it's not like they were going through famine but they were Protein deprived, if you could say it that way. And they all sport this vegan look nowadays. It's like this dusty complexion. I know it sounds demeaning and it's usually used in all books to describe people who are going through a famine, but it's the truth. People just acquire this dust-like complexion in the skin. It's just, it, it looks like grimy or just like dirty. You just, just like, why? And you don't understand why. It's just, it's not that they're filthy. It's just that they're not ingesting enough proteins. So the skin looks ashy and something off with the color. It's just, there is not enough shine. It's just like weirdly off. Something's off and you can tell something's off. And so many young men, 18 years old, 17, and they're like this height, this height, this height, maybe a little bit here. But I'm a, I'm a meter 59.5, just, I'm almost a meter 60. It, it, men shouldn't be around my height. And they weren't. At one point in time, we started every generation, every year, every five years, children would get taller and taller. And oh my God, children are so tall. And suddenly, now they're just shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. It's just like, long live socialism, right? It's just sad. And I know what you're gonna say. You might say, Victoria, different people, different genetics. Now, here's the thing, here's the catch. With the exception of the random Germanic person, and by Germanic, that doesn't mean it's German. It could be like Russian or something like that. It's just randomly tall, which, by the way, that's not true. Russians are usually very short, at least the ones I have met, probably due to farming. I don't know. But the, a lot of the women, Russian women I have met, they were like one meter 50, one meter 55. They were all babushkas, you know, babushkas, they were small and rotund. So, I don't know, maybe it was communism that made them short. But the women I've met, they were shorter than me. It's just... The thing is, and despite all of the African-Americans racist nowadays in the, in the media, that for some reason, remember I told you, that an American became viral for saying stupid things about Argentinians being so white. And then another black woman 
a black woman became viral for saying that we hate black people and that we have a horrible racist history, which is not the truth. And she was so sorry for spending money in our country. She also became viral. Next day, yet another black woman, this time around one from Spain, saying that we all Argentinians are so racist because we say, oh, I'm less descendant from Italians. Where are you from? They're just trying to open up conversation. They're not being racist. Get off your high horse. Anywho, everyone is just like obsessed with the fact that we're kind of European. And it's just like, yeah, we are. There's a lot of mixed race population here. And yes, you might think Europeans from the regions that we're from, not particularly high. But this is the thing. The vast majority of the populations where we are from were not high at a very specific point in time because they were poor. And they were widely known, for example, Galicians, some Italians, were widely known for being poor. Okay? They were severely malnourished. And many of our my relatives, as soon as they had kids in this land and they had access to food and stuff, they became tall. They became really tall, like insanely tall, like they were tall. And the vast majority of Argentinians are mixed race. We don't have, we don't, we didn't have a 1% law. We didn't have records of who married who, what race. We don't even keep records of race. The whatever records we have, it's on self-perceived race. So some people call themselves white, even to those to other people, they may not qualify like white. It's a self-perceived notion of whiteness. It's it's not even white, white, white. It's just like we don't classify ourselves in, in, in races. We don't even hold records. I was surprised when I was working for an American company and in my country they didn't ask for it because in my country it's actually legal to ask for your race. You just don't ask those questions. And then I saw American variations of uh, of all the t all the, the types of white they have, all the types of black. And then I watched the uh, the the British labels for races, and I was just like, "This is some nineteenth century shit. This is some seventeenth century type of thing." Like we don't have classifications since the colonial time period for what we are, so it's more of a self perceived thing. The vast majority of people don't really hold records for who they are. I could be African-American. And you would notice, you know why? Because the sheer amount of immigration of European people we had and the lack of records and the lack of limitations of who you marry caused that. People marry with each other. And with enough time, I can assure you, black African-American traits are not as dominant as people believe them to be. So we're all entirely mixed race, and yes, the vast majority of us are last descendants from that 19th century mass immigration, 20th century mass immigration. Like, to give you an idea, we had an... Um, I'm going to do another video another day. Another day, when I have more patience, when I start googling data, and, and I'm going to prepare that more clearly. We had several times fold a population, like... Our population was like 10 people, and then boom, we have late 19th century mass immigration, mass immigration. Then World War I, World War II, people were immigrating in here so much that the whole population was replaced. It's just by Europeans who were running away from famine and war and wars. And we're all mixed race to a degree, we, to a massive degree, we are. And when you actually look into the records of Argentinians, the vast majority of us are mixed race. So we are like our own specific blend of stuff. So we're all genetically kind of like not diverse, but really diverse. But when it comes to height, you can tell social classes. Like I've been a tutor for richer children. And I go to the houses of wealthier families who live in you know, in a very, uh, how is it called, uh, closed environment, no, 
those cities that are inside a close neighborhood, like fancier neighborhoods that's just a gated neighborhood that. And it's just like, in my country we call them country. I kid you not. It's the English word country. We call them country. I don't know why. It's probably a mistranslation or something. And it's just like, you look at them, and you look at wealthy people, and they're tall. Everyone is tall. They literally look down on me. Women and men. The roofs are taller, the doors are taller, the people are taller, everything's tall. People are like two meters tall, like one meter ninety. They're really tall, they're almost as tall as my door. And they look down on you, even women. Women just look down on me because they're taller. And then you go to all the neighborhoods in which people are poorer. It doesn't really matter what the color of their skin is. They were shorter. Short, 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 short. And I look down on them. And from people of my own social strata, or, or the, the kind of income we had, not, not like I was a good social strata, like low middle class or poor people, just like the upper echelon of being poor. And we all have the same height. We all have the same average height. But the children are shorter. The children of my kids, of my generation, are shorter. And they're rotund. Rotund like fat, like carbs fat. They don't have and you can tell in their skin they're not eating enough protein. You can tell in the skin and the hair and the nails. It's like a malnourished animal. It's just you can tell. It's not famine. But it's not thriving. It's just... So the big issue, it's as per usual, income and class. You're very much determined by the amount of income you have. You're very much determined by the class you find yourself in when you're grown up. And that's going to determine this, this, the length of your bones. Not genetics. Because I have seen people of all genetics who happen to be, to have grown up wealthy. And they're all taller. And people are just growing shorter and shorter. And you can see even those who were from many years ago and they managed to grow tall because they're older and even poor people back in the day they have better food that people nowadays have their skin is just growing dustier and it's just sad it's seen how slowly but surely everyone deteriorates and it's just like this is so sad and then people say that socialism works no it's it's not i'm gonna keep eating this guns i'm so sorry it's so disheartening to see. And the best part is just looking at children and how you can clearly tell from the same school sometimes. They go to the same private school because private schools are very common to go here. Parents will invest everything they don't, don't have into taking skill, kids to a private school because public schools are trash. And sometimes private schools won't even guarantee that, but at least, like, they have some days at school. Like, they have days at school and sometimes they have a better education. So parents invest everything they do not have into sending the kids to school. Because first, that's our culture. Second, people can tell that the education is just trash. It is. And even if they don't get a better education in the private school, at least they get some education. And by some, I mean way less than I got when I was a kid. It is what it is. Because the whole education system is just going down. And you can tell which kid is which social strata, not on the basis of the color of their skin, because that's not really something that really matters in my country. But on the height and in the cut on the on the how their skin is just dust 
it's just it looks like something's off and you can tell which kid went through maybe not a worse time but they didn't have access to quality of proteins you can tell you can tell which kid had access to a plethora of nutrients and a plethora of of, of proteins and they just grow like and you can tell which kid had some access to a low quality protein like me usually chica, uh, chicken and usually those high in hormone chicken that's why they also develop puberty very quickly and they grow big boobs a beard a mustache very early on because of the hormones it's just and then you you have the kids who are at the worst and they had severe limitations whether the mom had it while she was pregnant the child had it while he was growing up the only case in which you see someone of a higher upper ranking social strata and someone from a really really privileged background like someone wealthy and they happen to be short and have a dustier color of skin that's a rarity and that's usually a vegan that's why i call it the vegan look they are sporting the vegan look because you can tell which kid it's a son of a vegan it's usually a very small minority because being vegan is expensive and it's like a really privileged upper class shenanigan it's impractical and being something so impractical, it has to be a wealthy stuff. You know, it's just only wealthy people and teenage kids who are following a fashion and university people. But in the university, you're already developed. So you're just like, you're just bankrolling in what you already had in your bones, in your system, in your liver. Literally, in your liver, you're just banking on that. And I have seen, and you only see children who are upper class and should be well fed, being shorter and dustier in look. Like literally like dust in their faces, like greyness, like a weird dullness to their skin and a, a weird look to it, like crankly, like almost sickly. It is sick. Uh, you see that with vegans only. That's all. That's only. That's all. With vegan children who were raised vegan. And that's rare. Like, it's a rarity. You can spot them from 10,000 kilometers away because it's just like, it's like a really privileged school, sometimes really the most expensive ones in the, in, in the region. And they, every kid over there, it's pain. Four figures in, in American dollars, if not more, per month. They're paying a, a humongous amount of money, like five figures per year in dollars, to go to that school, and the child looks famished. And you're just like, what's that? <laughs> why, why is the kid looks like their clothes are fine? So you, the shoes are new. Oh, they're vegan leather. Oh, that's great. That's great. Why do you eat very often and they just have this vegan diet? It's just like, oh, we can tell. We can tell. This just, we can totally tell. To me, that's, that's, that's abuse. What do you want me to tell? It's just parents uh, and pet owners making their children and their pets go vegan it's just a crime it should be a crime i don't know why it's not a crime it's just should be but the thing is there isn't that much research on the long-term effects of veganism and given the fact that so many so many doctors are biased when it comes to that it's going to take about a century to to realize the true consequence of this Maybe less if there is a political interest in that. But the truth is, you look at children, you can pretty much tell which one is being poorly fed. You can pretty quickly tell. It's just so sad. So, yeah. Uh, 
I'm so sorry, I've brought you two videos that are quite depressing. I'm going to see if I can find in my brain something cheerful to speak about. That way, tomorrow's video is nicer. Or at least the one you see the next the day after this one. So, yeah. I'm so sorry for being so gloom and doom. It's just, I was doing like, catharsis on the, on the scones. And I was just like, I can't hold it anymore. Ah! <laughs> Ah! Oh, I know what I can talk about. More gossip. More rural gossip. Yay! <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Grab your popcorn. See you tomorrow. Till next time. I hope you're having a beautiful day and a lovely week thus far. Until next time, I wish you nothing but the best. And yeah, till next time. Bye-bye.